Hi, everyone. Welcome and thanks for joining us. My name is Robert. I'll be your host. This is Dolly Madison, where we're going to be learning about her inspiring and fascinating life and career. So let's go ahead and get started. This is part of a series of programs we're doing on the First Ladies. Our next one coming up later on in the month of April will be on Eleanor Roosevelt. So we hope you can join us for that. And last month, we talked about Lady Bird Johnson, and hopefully you were able to join us for that. If not, there will be a recording of it posted on our Washington, D.C. History and Culture YouTube channel at some point in time in the next few days, so you can be on the lookout for that. But of today, of course, we're going to be talking about Dolly Madison, one of the greatest first ladies in history. So look forward to learning more about her and talking about her. Um, so this is a two-part program if you're watching this live. In part one, we'll do an overview of the life of Dolly Madison, the fascinating and inspiring life of Dolly Madison. So that'll be part one. Then we'll have like a short, I don't know, five minute intermission if you're watching us live on Zoom. Um, and then we'll watch this Dolly Madison docudrama that was put out by PBS American Experience a few years ago. It's really an excellent film, uh, highly recommend it. So if you're watching this live, you get to see on Zoom, you get to see both part one and part two. If you're watching just the recording of this program um, on our YouTube channel, we'll only be able to show you part one because we can't uh, record or broadcast part two because of copyrights uh, from our friends at PBS. But anyway, um, if you are watching this program, a taping of it on YouTube, you can always find the Dolly Madison documentary on your own. So that'll be the story with that. So part one, I'll be a little bit of an overview of Dolly's life. And then part two, we'll do the film screening after like a short intermission. And here is that program that we're going to be watching in just a little bit. It's called Dolly Madison, America's First Lady. And it's really excellent because there's not really a lot of films about first ladies. They just had the series that came out a few months ago, but really be I that, how many films can you name that focus on our first ladies? There really aren't very many. Most of the film portrayals of first ladies are in the context of a film about the president of the United States. So like the Jackie film is an exception, a very notable exception. Um, there was the Lincoln film, Steven Spielberg's Lincoln film uh, that came out several years ago with Sally Field as Mary Lincoln. But of course, that was in the context of the film about Abraham Lincoln. So there's not really a lot of films, unfortunately, that focus on the lives of our first ladies. But this one does. And so I wanted to screen it for you. And we'll be showing it a little bit later today. So that's the plan for today, talking about Dolly Madison. Um, I think a lot of people familiar with some of the basics of Dolly Madison's life, and she was first lady, uh, and she was very highly regarded or is very highly regarded. I don't think people fully realize, though, all the uh, obstacles that she came over during her, her life, and then also the impact that she had on the presidency and the role of first lady and American history and et cetera, et cetera. So she really has this fascinating and inspiring life story. So we'll talk about that today. My name is Robert Kellerman. I'll be your host. I'm joining you from Los Angeles, California, a uh, little bit myself. I grew up in Detroit. Um, I really started learning and studying Dolly Madison's life when I lived in Washington, DC for many, many years. Um, and let's see what else can I tell you about myself. That's pretty much it. I'm just a big history buff. And I really feel like the history of first ladies is an underappreciated history. It's not uh, as well known of a topic as it should be. And so put these programs together, uh, along with some assistance from my wife, Michelle, uh, and our friend Patty, and then wanted to show them all with you. And speaking of Patty, we have our co-host Patty joining us once again today. Hi, Patty. How are you doing? Happy Saturday. Happy Saturday to you. And um, again, looking forward to this program. Um, as Joanne is just saying, women's history in general is underappreciated. So you do us all a service, Robert. And we do have a question about, okay, if I understand correctly, you're going to go into the film as part of this session, because somebody asked if that's a separate one. Um, no, so it'll be like part two. So what we'll do is I'll talk about Dolly Madison and her life and different things that she was involved in. Um, and then we'll take like a short five minute intermission break. And then we'll actually start streaming the film. So hold on for one second and I'll pull up the film. So I think my talk will probably be, I don't know, maybe like 45 minutes. Uh, and then we'll have a five minute break and then we'll do this documentary. The documentary is 85 minutes if you're watching this live. Um, okay. So if you want to. 
If you want to come back in 45 minutes and just watch the documentary, that's cool. <laughs> um, that answers the, the majority of questions we've had right now. And we have a really lovely range of favorite first ladies. So, <clears throat> but everybody is looking forward to this as far as I can tell. Thank well, you. Thank you. I greatly appreciate that. So let me go back to, so yeah, again, a little bit different setup, depending on if you're watching this live or recording on our YouTube channel. If you're watching us, the recording, um, we'll talk for a while about Dolly Madison's fascinating and inspiring life. Um, and then that'll be the end of the program. If you're watching us live on Zoom, which is, there's always a lot of perks to doing that, uh, as opposed to watching the recording, we'll do part one and then we'll watch the film screening. So you can be on the lookout for that. All right, let's go ahead and get up. Right. So, uh, Patty, thanks for joining us. Patty, do you have a favorite first lady or first ladies putting you on the spot? Well, I would say um, that in my early life and part of what got me so interested in history and uh, uh, American politics actually would be Eleanor Roosevelt. So that's a sentimental favorite. But with each one, I mean, the more I learn about each of them and think about um, who they were and what they did within the context of their times and the development of um, the country, it's hard to choose a solid favorite if you understand what I'm saying. Oh yeah, they, no, I understand completely. Yeah, a, a humongous amount of contribution. Um, just the other day, the White House History Happy Hour, they had an author who did a, a really great sounding book on Grover Cleveland. And uh, he actually compared uh, his wife, Frances, who was much younger than he was. Um, but to Dolly Madison. So I wanted to remember to tell you that because. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, that's interesting. You'll have to tell yeah. us more about that a little bit. We can start talking about her life. And yeah. The I, difference. I, <laughs> yeah. I meant to uh, send you a note on it and I just haven't gotten to it yet. But um, he was very well received. I'll tell you, I, a lot of people were putting into the chat in that program that they were they had just ordered his book. So, oh, awesome. OK, well, thank you very yeah. much. Appreciate that. Excellent. So if you're curious, um, I've led tours, a lot of tours of the Smithsonian's uh, First Ladies exhibit, and I always ask people who their favorite First Lady is there. And then when we've done these Zoom programs, we typically ask people who their favorite First Lady is. So my informal polling, just FYI, is Jacqueline Kennedy uh, is by far everyone's favorite First Lady. Um, and then I would say Eleanor Roosevelt, probably number two. And then after that, it's really kind of like a whole mix of Michelle Obama, Laura Bush, and Dolly Madison, and all different types of um, people. So just FYI, my informal polling of people over the past um, 10 years or so. All right, well, let's go ahead and kick things off and we'll talk about Dolly Madison. Patty, feel free to interject or chime in uh, whenever you want to. So here's a trivia question for you. First ladies trivia. I was thinking maybe at some point in time we could do first ladies Jeopardy uh, and we could do like a Jeopardy style format about the first ladies because a lot of really interesting, uh, not well-known facts about the first ladies. So where do you think Dolly Madison was born and raised at. I'm thinking people would probably guess like Philadelphia or New York, um, or maybe our good friend Lon Tell out there. He probably knows the answer because Lon's from Greensboro, North Carolina, and that's where Dolly Madison was born and raised at. Greensboro, North Carolina. So little known fact about her. Um, so Dolly Madison was born as Dolly Payne on May 20th, 1768 in a log cabin just like Abraham Lincoln, uh, in Guilford County, which is now present day Greensboro, North Carolina, to Mary Coles and John Payne Jr. Uh, Dolly Madison grew up on a farm working the land with the rest of her family. Uh, she was given a strict Quaker upbringing and education. Um, the film that we're gonna be talking about is really excellent, but because Dolly Madison's life is so large and involves so many things, I thought I would do kind of this precursor program uh, to kind of maybe fill in some of the gaps that they didn't talk about or maybe uh, uh, elaborate on some of the things that are really important. So she grew up in a Quaker household. And then in 1883, when Dolly was 15, the Payne family, moved to Philadelphia at the time, the second largest American city. So I think Philadelphia uh, outside of Washington DC is perhaps the city that's most closely associated with Dolly Madison. And if you're in Greensboro, North Carolina, uh, good friend Lon's hometown, you can visit the Greensboro History Museum and they actually have quite a few historical artifacts related to Dolly Madison. Uh, this is her famous red dress. It looks a little bit more orange because of fading um, and then the way the photography lighting was. There's actually um, 
two different versions of this, the original, and then there's a reproduction. And I think the one at the Greensboro History Museum is a reproduction. Um, but it's really cool to go there and learn about their hometown heroine, Dolly Madison. And so the next time you're in North Carolina, you can check that out. So in this program, I wanted to kind of include also some um, places where you can go learn more about Dolly Madison, just because there are quite a few opportunities for you to do so. So born and raised in Greensboro, North Carolina. I don't think a lot of people would have known that unless they had a connection to North Carolina. Uh, and then as mentioned, when she was 15, Dolly Madison moved to Philadelphia. Uh, so let's talk about that. Philadelphia at the time was the second largest city in the United States after New York, of course. And in 1790, at the age of 21, after she had been living in Philadelphia for about six years, Dolly married John Todd. And they had two sons, John Jr., who was born in 1792, and William, who was born in 1793. Now, this was a time, a lot of happiness and sadness in Dolly's life. Uh, happiness that she got married, she has the two children, but she also experiences a lot of personal tragedy. So her father died in 1792. And then the following year in August, a yellow fever epidemic broke out in Philadelphia, which killed over 5,000 people in four months, or 10% of the Philadelphia population. So uh, imagine COVID, but only uh, way more worse. And so that's what happened in Philadelphia. Yellow fever was um, a very deadly disease that breaks out, kills about 10% of the population. Dolly's family was personally hit very hard by this. She lost her husband. She lost her youngest son, William. And then she also lost her mother-in-law and her father-in-law. So in a short period of time, uh, she loses her husband, one of her two sons, and her two in-law parents. Um, and, so, and so while undergoing this personal loss, she really has to kind of pull herself together or so, so keep herself afloat, so to speak, um, because she had lost her financial support when her husband passed away. So very tragic. Um, time in Dolly's life. And if you're in Philadelphia, you can visit the Dolly Todd house, not the Dolly Madison house, because she hasn't married James Madison yet, but the Dolly Todd house. It's part of the Independence National Park, run by our good friends at the National Park Service. So check that out. I always like to visit these historic homes of famous people, uh, not only because it gives you a chance to learn about their lives, but it's also really interesting to learn about what life was like in the 1700s, like, hey, check out this kitchen. <laughs> and a little bit different than kitchens of today with the hearth fireplace set up. And then the dining room. And then upstairs in the bedroom. So again, really fascinating to visit this. So next time you're in Philadelphia, make sure you check out the Dolly Todd house. Although it's funny because sometimes people call it um, the Dolly Madison house. All right, so speaking of Dolly Madison um, and her husband, James Madison, in May 1794, widow Dolly Payne Todd was introduced to bachelor congressman James Madison by their mutual friend, Aaron Burr. So Aaron Burr has become a very, uh, he's a very controversial historical figure. He's become a real bad guy uh, because of the Hamilton uh, musical and the famous Hamilton uh, Alexander Hamilton Aaron Burr duel took place in 1804. So 10 years before this, he introduced Dolly Madison or Dolly Payne Todd at the time to James Madison. So wow, imagine how differently uh, history would have turned out if those two hadn't met. And um, really interesting facet of history is how did the future first ladies meet the future presidents? Really interesting stories there. So like for instance, John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Bouvier met at a, um, a dinner party and some were set up on blind dates and just all kinds of stuff. No one's met on Tinder yet, at least not in terms of the White House <laughs> relationships, but I don't know, maybe someday. Um, and after a courtship of just a few weeks, uh, several weeks, remember they met in May, they were married on September 15th, 1794. Now this is a little bit controversial uh, whenever there's a big age difference amongst people. Sometimes people uh, get very judgmental about that, but hey, whatever works for them works for me. As one of my friends says, uh, if hey, if they like it, I love it. Uh, so, but she was 26 and he was 43, so he was a, a bachelor 
uh, he was serving in the U.S. House of Representatives. So a little bit of an age difference, but they had a really long marriage, 42 years, which lasted until he died. And there's been a lot of, um, uh, what's the word, commentary uh, on their marriage and what kind of marriage was it really? Uh, she seemed very different. She was very beautiful and glamorous and well-dressed. And he was kind of, um, oh, I don't know, maybe nerdy, <laughs> uh, for lack of a better word, you know, the age difference. And, you know, was it really a love match or was it just a marriage of, you know, financial convenience for her? And in my own personal opinion and research, I do think there was a lot of love between the two of them. So just FYI. But, hey, I'm a romantic at heart. So keep that in mind. So there is James Madison on the left, born in 1751, of our founding fathers. And the portrait on the light is probably the most famous image of Dolly Madison. We'll talk more about her depiction a little bit later. So who was James Madison? Well, he was a congressman. He was a member of the U.S. House of Representatives. Uh, at the time he met Dolly, he was serving in the role in that capacity from 1789 to 1797. Uh, and then he retired from Congress, moved to Virginia with Dolly, um, and then Later on, he got summoned back to Washington uh, to be Secretary of State for Thomas Jefferson. Um, so he served in that capacity for eight years from 1801 to 1809. And then of course he was president uh, during the years of 1809 to 1817. So a little bit about him, but we're gonna of course talk mostly about Dolly Madison. All right, so as I mentioned, the Madisons met in Philadelphia. They fell in love, got married. Um, they were kind of going back and forth um, between there and New York. And, uh, Washington, D.C. for different endeavors. But then he retires from Congress. They moved to Virginia. We'll talk about their house there a little bit later. Um, and then in the Jefferson administration, he goes back to be Secretary of State. So these are our first first ladies. Martha Washington, of course, was the first one. Then Abigail Adams, the wife of John Adams, was second. Um, and then Thomas Jefferson's wife had passed away and so they didn't make sally hemmings uh, first lady of course even though they had a uh, some type of relationship with one another which also is a little bit controversial we'll talk about that in a future program um so who was first lady when thomas jefferson was president well his daughter martha served in that capacity but um the whole social aspect of martha randolph's uh, role was not something that she really enjoyed. She was helping out as best she could and uh, she was willing to you know, do participate in things like that. But the whole socializing thing of kind of like being the first lady of the house uh, wasn't really her deal. And, and most people, when they think of the first lady, they think of the wife of the president, uh, which is true. But there have been instances where the president either was not married um, or was a widower or the wife was incapacitated or something like that. Um, or had died. Uh, and so other women have kind of filled in that role. And so when Thomas Jefferson was president, his daughter Martha was the first lady. And so Dolly Madison actually was helping out with a lot of the social functions that were taking place at the White House during the Jefferson administration. Then of course, she becomes first lady in her own right in 1809 after the election of her husband. And there's a portrait of Dolly Madison. There's not a lot of portraits of her, um, maybe not as many as you'd expect, um, there's a few, uh, but there's not a lot of images that were done from her in her own lifetime. There's been a lot of portraits made of her after she passed away, like in contemporary times, but not a lot taken from her life. Here's one for you. And then again, this is the most famous image of her, in my opinion. This is hanging at the White House. Uh, it's part of the White House Historical Association art collection. It's Portrait Dolly Madison, 1804. So you can see this was a few years before she was first lady. This is when she was married to the Secretary of State, her husband, James Madison. So if you've seen that image before, that's the story behind that. And then this is something that Patty and I have talked a lot about in our programs, the impact that the first ladies had, or I guess you'd call them at this point in time, future first ladies had on their husbands. Like for instance, how many presidents would not have made it to the White House without their wives? You can probably say quite a few, <laughs> uh, depending on the circumstances of the president uh, and first lady. And so I really think that um, Dolly Madison, not sure if her husband would have been uh, president if it was not for her. And why is that? Well, because, the election of 1808 
which was between James Madison and Charles Pickney was very close. Now, when you look at the electoral college vote, uh, it looks a little lopsided, but when you look at the popular vote, which unfortunately I couldn't find a chart uh, that showed how close the popular vote was, um, it was pretty close. The election of 1808 was very close. And Madison ends up beating Charles Pickney for the presidency. And Pickney would later state that he lost because of Dolly Madison. Uh, let's hear a quote from him. So Pickney said, I might have had a better chance of winning the election for president had I faced Mr. Madison alone. I was beaten by Mr. and Mrs. Madison. So Dolly Madison was very politically savvy. She was really smart. Uh, she was her husband's best and closest political advisor throughout his career. She was really good at networking and socializing. And so she did a lot. And her husband, James Madison, while he's considered one of our better presidents, he wasn't known as being like a really super personable guy. Uh, he wasn't the life of the party by any means. And so he really, and he wasn't very charismatic either, which you don't have to be charismatic to be president, of course. Um, but at that point in time, um, it was a little bit challenging for him. And so Dolly really uh, uh, got him a lot of support and a lot of votes. And at that point in time, networking uh, and socializing and things like that really played an important part of presidential election. So would James Madison have been elected without his wife, Dolly? I don't know. That's a good question. Patty, uh, any thoughts? We've talked in this top about this topic before. Uh, how many of these presidents would never have become president if it wasn't for their wives? What are you what's your thoughts on this? Well, not being alive at the time, I'm I i do not have a clear sensibility on that. But yes, I, I just put in the chat that she was the most overtly politically active first lady um, that we ever had, and actually the only one for quite some time that was out out and about with it, not necessarily quietly behind the scenes. Um, she, she was as circumspect, I think, as uh, she had to be, but she really pushed the limits of that for the time. So I yeah, agree. You bring, yeah, you bring up a great point. Was very controversial in so many ways. So I do think he owed a lot to her uh, activism, yes. Oh yeah, you bring up a really great point too. That was not common for women of that era to get involved in politics and to be advising their husband on political matter. I mean, women were supposed to, you know, look nice and be quiet, stay in the background and raise the children and be supportive and all that stuff. But to be like a advisor and partner, yeah, there were quite a few women that did that, but it was really unusual um, of that time. So really unique for her. She had to be very savvy um, to manage that dance, you know, between- and to balance that. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think it was uh, uh, an important dynamic between them. Yes. Oh, yeah. And of course, their political opponents, and I use the term there, <laughs> meaning James and Dolly's uh, political opponents, of course, were not happy about that. But, um, you know, most people that have served as the role of First Lady um, have garnered some type of controversy or another. So that's just the way it is. All right. So anyway, let's talk about Dolly Madison. So uh, again, she was really smart and politically savvy and intelligent. In addition, um, she was known as one of the most beautiful women in Washington, D.C., if not America. She was very fashionable and well-dressed. She was a real trendsetter. I kind of tend to think of her as kind of like she was the Jacqueline Kennedy before. Jacqueline Kennedy, if you, if, I guess if you surveyed people before, say, Eleanor Roosevelt came around, um, Dolly Madison would have been uh, one of the most popular and favorite first ladies, if not the most favorite and popular. Now, um, maybe since then, other people have come along and for different reasons, partially because of media uh, saturation, you know, Eleanor Roosevelt, Jacqueline Kennedy, and things like that. Other women have uh, maybe gotten on that list as well, but very highly regarded, but not just among the public, but also for historians. And so what was she doing uh, as first lady? Well, she oversaw the first inaugural ball in Washington, D.C. So if you live in Washington, D.C., or if, not, um, if you ever get a chance to visit an inaugur or attend an inaugural ball, uh, that's really a cool experience. I've been able to do that myself um, from when I lived in Washington, D.C., and that's something that's just kind of like a part of the uh, culture, so to speak, of Washington, D.C. is the inaugural ball when the president uh, and first lady will be moving into the White House. But the very first time that happened in Washington, D.C. was in 1809 at the inauguration of James Madison. And guess who was in charge of that event? 
why it was Dolly Madison. And the ended up having a lot of social events at the White House. Um, the first two presidents, George Washington and most of John Adams, 10 years president, um, the White House had not been built yet. And so the Capitol was in Philadelphia. So when the White House uh, opens up um, and Thomas Jefferson was kind of a little bit more of a recluse. Um, he liked to just kind of be by himself and read books uh, or have small events. Um, so this is really the first time you see these large social events and gatherings at the White House, uh, which would really become something popular and commonplace in future administrations. So she's really helped kind of setting uh, the stage, so to speak, for things to come. And also at this point in time, Washington, D.C. was not the big city, metropolitan area, international uh, place that it is now. It was pretty small town. And so she really made it a social destination for uh, not only Americans, but for people from other parts of the world that would be visiting. So to give Dolly Madison some credit for that. Um, this is one of my favorite rooms at the White House, the Blue Room. And the Madisons played a significant role in decorating this room. So the Dolly Madison, James Madison in the Blue Room. Check that out. And as I mentioned, Dolly Madison was she served this role as confidant and political advisor to her husband, James Madison. Now, just as a FYI, if you're watching this live um, this weekend, the first weekend in April 2023, um, you actually have a chance to go see the White House up close and in person because they don't do this very often. Um, but every year the White House hosts what they call the Spring Garden Tour, where they let visitors come walk through the gardens of the White House. And so it's taking place, if you're watching this live, it's actually taking place this weekend, uh, Saturday, April 1st, and Sunday, April 2nd. If you want details on it, just Google White House Spring Garden Tour 2023. Um, you can find out how to get tickets for that. They're free. I've done this a number of occasions, really highly recommend it. You can walk around the grounds. Here's the White House. And then here's the gardens and you can kind of walk around on your own and check things out. So it's a great opportunity to see the White House. Uh, you can walk up. You can't actually go inside on this particular event, but you, you can walk pretty close. Uh, this is a picture I took of the Marine Band performing on the Truman Balcony. So this weekend's your big chance to go check that out. And again, the tickets are free. So if you want to go um, later this afternoon or tomorrow, make sure you Google that. Now, the thing that or one of the things that Dolly Madison is most famous for is she rescued the George Washington portrait when the British burned the White House. Uh, so this was during the War of 1812. And this is one of the most famous images of George Washington. This is a portrait of him that hangs in the East Room of the White House. And so during the War of 1812, the Americans are fighting the British. Uh, the British come attack Washington, D.C. Uh, they burn the Capitol and then they march towards the White House and they end up burning that building. James Madison was off. Uh, President James Madison, this is when Dolly Madison is first lady, of course. Her husband, James Madison, was off dealing with some issues related to the war. So he wasn't there. And as the British are approaching, Dolly is really kind of in charge, uh, directing what to, should be happening at the White House to evacuate it. So she has a lot of important papers. Um, packed up the silverware in China, uh, and they didn't want to leave without this portrait of Washington. So she had it taken out of the frame, uh, and it, all this stuff was carted off by horse-drawn carriages away from the British. The our British Army moves in, they burn the White House. Then again, this is during the War of 1812, and the portrait of George Washington was saved. It's speculated that if the British would have showed up at the White House and the portrait was still there, they would have brought it back to England as a war prize, so to speak, but that didn't happen. And so that's one of the kind of the things that Dolly Madison is known for is her heroic uh, endeavors during the British invasion and burning of Washington, D.C., in particular, this saving of the George Washington portrait. Now, after the White House was burned, where did the Madisons end up living? Well, they moved to this place called the Octagon House. And I wanted to tell you about this because if you're living in Washington, D.C., or if you're ever going to be visiting, this is a really cool place to visit, the Octagon House. Uh, here's a picture from the outside. Why is it called the Octagon House? Well, because it has eight sides. It's an eight-sided building. And this is a home just a few blocks away from the White House. And here's the historical marker. See, it was built between 1799 and 1802. And then next to the blue arrow, occupied by President and Mrs. 
James Madison from August 1814, after the burning of the White House, through March of 1815, at which point in time the White House was refurbished and they moved back after the burning of the White House by the British during the War of 1812. It's also where the Treaty of Ghent was signed by President James Madison, which ended the War of 1812. And if you like historic homes, this is a really cool place to visit. Um, it has really beautiful architecture. This is a very historically significant building. Um, it's fascinating to find out the way people lived in this era. And there's really not a lot of places that the president and first lady have lived <laughs> outside of the White House, but they did live here for several months. And so you can go check this out. And they have tours here uh, throughout the year and special programs that you can go check out. And again, this is called the Octagon House, just a few blocks from the White House. And if you like historic homes, this would be a good place to visit, or if you want to learn about how people lived back in the day, so to speak. The socializing uh, events continued when they were, when the Madisons were at the Octagon House. And here's the big kitchen. And again, they have a lot of special programs throughout the year, living history programs and things like that. Uh, here's an actress or a historical reenactor portraying Dolly Madison, wearing one of her famous hats. Now, I was gonna do a program in the near future. Washington DC has a lot of really interesting uh, and cool old homes from both the colonial and the federal period. Um, so I was thinking at some point in time, maybe later this year, I'll do a live stream program like this and we'll talk about some of these uh, colonial and federal style homes in Washington, D.C. So be on the lookout for that. Don't have a date for that, but some point in time in the future. And if you also want to learn about Dolly Madison, you should go check out the Smithsonian American History Museum. They have the First Ladies exhibit, which is the most popular exhibit at the Smithsonian American History Museum. And before COVID, I actually used to lead uh, tours of this exhibit with my wife, Michelle, assisting me at some point in time. So if you're in Washington, D.C., uh, make sure you check this out. They have a lot of gowns and dresses of the First Ladies, probably the thing they're most well known for. And they have all these dishes. The White House um, China collection is really fascinating. And they have a specific section on different First Ladies, including Dolly Madison. So here's her special area. So you can learn more about her there. And I don't have really time to kind of go through all the different facets of this um, particular exhibit. Just kind of wanted to make you aware of it if you're not familiar with it. Here's some personal mementos for Dolly Madison. And then they have one of her dresses. Actually, they have a couple of them on display. This is the most famous one. Dolly Madison's silk gown from the 1810s. Dolly's silk satin open robe is hand embroidered with flowers, butterflies, dragonflies, and phoenixes. It is typical of the style of the late 1810s. And then and this is interesting. So this was a postcard that was for sale uh, in Washington, D.C. back in the day. So imagine uh, going to Washington, D.C. in an era before um, iPhones and Instagram and all that stuff. And you want kind of mementos of your trip. And so if you were going to Smithsonian, you can go to the gift shop and they would sell these postcards uh, that would kind of reproduce some of the things you could see, including Dolly Madison, one of her gowns. All right, so when the Madisons weren't living in Washington, D.C., they lived in a place called Montpelier, which is in Orange, Virginia. It's in Central Virginia. And where is this at? So here's Washington, D.C. up here. And then a long time ago, I used to live in Winchester, which is up here, Winchester, Virginia. And then another time I used to work in Richmond. Um, so I'm, I spent a lot of years living in Virginia. But anyway, James Madison, I wish it was called James and Dolly Madison, but it's called James Madison's Montpelier. You can see it's about two hours southwest of Washington, D.C. That's if there's no traffic. Sometimes it might take you two hours just to get from D.C. to Chantilly <laughs> or D.C. to Manassas. But if there's no traffic, um, this makes a great day trip to go down here. It's, this is really beautiful country. Um, there's a lot of horse farms and um, 
I don't know, forests, and it's just really beautiful to drive through here. Um, then here's Richmond over here. So let's go there. So this is the Madison's home, and there it is. It was restored several years ago. So this is their home. So if you want to learn more about Dolly Madison, you need to take a field trip out here and look at that spectacular house. And there's a close-up. So this was a plantation. Um, the Madisons had enslaved people living here. Here's the view of the mountains. So imagine opening up the front door and looking out at this spectacular vista. So this is really a beautiful area, central Virginia, uh, the Shenandoah Valley and things like that. And here is the Madison home where they would entertain guests. This was interesting. They set this room up, the dining room, uh, to kind of recreate like a dinner party that the Madisons would be hosting. And when you come in this room, uh, there's an audio recording that has some of the different people that are attending speaking. Uh, so it's kind of cool to like go back in time and see what it would be like to attend one of these dinner parties at the Madisons Montpelier and beautiful wallpaper and the carpeting and the dishes and all that kind of stuff. And it's also interesting, what kind of food did people eat back then? And it's eat blueberries and cookies and strawberries and all that stuff. Here's their bedroom upstairs. This is the bedroom where James Madison actually died in this room. And then this historic site, um, it's connected, of course, to the Madisons, but it's considered one of the top uh, sites in America that describes the uh, institution of American slavery. This particular site has done a lot uh, to talk about how enslaved people lived. Their programs and exhibits are really highly regarded. Um, so if that's something that interests you, uh, make sure you check that out. It's really uh, fascinating to see the differences of how the enslaved people live uh, versus the others that were on site. And so I wanted to mention that as well. And of course, it's most known for Dolly and James Madison. So after the after her husband died, um, which they talk about in the film, so Dolly Madison decided not to stay at Montpelier, and she wanted to get back to the city. Dolly Madison likes to socialize and see people, and while she was willing to um, spend many many years at Montpelier, that country living wasn't really her. Uh, cup of tea, so to speak. So after her husband passed away, um, to get back to the city and then also because of some financial issues, uh, she ends up moving back to Washington, D.C. and she lives in a place called the Cuts Madison House. Now, this is a site that's typically not open to the public, um, but we'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, there's quite a few portraits of Dolly Madison post White House years because she was kind of considered the grand dame of Washington, D.C. So here's a famous book of her. It's at the New York Historical Society for our friends in New York. And then here's another, this is probably, if I had to guess, I would, in my opinion, this is probably the second most famous portrait of Dolly Madison. Um, it was done many, many years after she left the White House. You can see it was done in 1848. And this is at the Smithsonian National Portrait Gallery in Washington, D.C. And so this is that home that Dolly Madison lived in. It's on Lafayette Square. Um, if you've been to DC, you know where that is. It's right across the street. It's a park, essentially, right across the street from the White House. And there it is. And again, this is not open to the public, um, but they talk in the film about how Dolly Madison was uh, a big part of the Washington DC social scene in her later years. It would be quite a honor to get an invitation to one of her uh, social events at her home. And so this is where she spent the final years of her life. And then Dolly Madison, who was born before the American Revolution, her life really covers an incredible time in American history just with all the changes. So she ends up getting photographed by a young photographer named Matthew Brady, who had become famous during the Civil War. And he took this picture of her and Anne Payne, one of her relatives, in 1848. So an early photograph of Dolly Madison later in life. And then here's another photo. This is actually not of 
doesn't have an in it, but it was taken at the same time. And it was from 1848. And there you have it. So the film will go into more of these challenges that Dolly faced with the death of her husband and her son and uh, her Quaker upbringing <laughs> and political controversy and the impact she had on the presidency at such and such. But she really had this fascinating and inspiring life. So I kind of just want to, again, go over kind of some things that the film either didn't have a chance to talk about or maybe kind of give you some ideas on things where you can go see uh, to learn about Dolly Madison's life. Um, and so let me check in with Patty in just a moment. But before we do that, um, this is part of our First Lady series. We're doing uh, different women who have been in that role. And someday we'll have uh, men uh, be the first spouse. And looking forward to the day when we have a, a women president someday. But anyway, um, our next program later on in the month of April will be on Eleanor Roosevelt. Apologies, we had to uh, reschedule these programs the Dolly one and the Eleanor one, because I've been working really, really long hours, and I just haven't been able to get a lot of break time from work. But anyway, you can be on the lookout for that in April. And then last month, we had our program on another one of my favorite first ladies, Lady Bird Johnson. And we made a recording of that program. If you missed it, or if you want to watch it again, uh, I hope to post the recording of it on our YouTube channel in the next few days. I just have not had any time whatsoever to go um, upload the videos and edit them, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. But you can be on the lookout for that on our YouTube channel. And then just as a FYI, this November is the 60th anniversary of the John F. Kennedy assassination. And so if you're interested in coming down to Dallas, Texas, I was thinking what we could do is do like a bunch of um, in-person programs in Dallas, like go visit the assassination site um, and the JFK Sixth Floor Museum um, in downtown Dallas. If you're not able to go to Dallas, we'll probably have a lot of live stream or online programs like this. So you can be on the lookout for that. But of course that won't be until November. So we're still working out the dates for that. But today, of course, we're talking about Dolly Madison. So um, what we'll do in a few moments, we'll take a short break for like five minutes, have an intermission so you can go get um, a beverage or popcorn <laughs> or whatever you wanna do. Uh, and then we'll start streaming the film. But before we do that, let's check back in with Patty. Patty, how's it going? And any final thoughts on Dolly Madison before we start streaming the film? Well, um, Susie Ellicott has uh, dropped some information that um, there's um, an actor who um, has spent a lifetime studying and portraying James Madison, whose recordings can be found on YouTube. And uh, I was she's not always, aware of that. That's cool. I was Thank not aware of that either. And I, I generally enjoy those when they're done well. Um, you know, the historical figures actually being acted out within their own words. Um, and yeah, there's commentary on the um, the contra the sad controversy that has recently been happening around Montpelier, uh, based on that reversal of uh, the decision to allow uh, Madisonian slave descendants to be on the board. Um, I'm not sure how or if that's been resolved. Um, no, it's still ongoing. Um... I was thinking about talking about that, but I was like, you know, let's just focus on Dolly Madison. So that is so that is an issue. There's some debate and controversy with the Montpelier um, site. If you want to learn more about it, I'd probably just recommend Googling because it's been covered in the media quite a right. bit. Right, and, and then uh, somebody pointed out, and I'm not sure, I, I asked the question back if um, it was the David Rubenstein that was involved in uh, the Monuments Men work, but um, David Rubenstein apparently contributed a great deal of money to the pres preservation and restoration of Montpelier too. So um, I'm sorry, whoever was talking to me about that, um, if you if you have any chance, uh, Michael's asking about Dolly Madison's ice cream and somebody had earlier pointed out oh. that she was <laughs> Easter ice cream. <laughs> so- How um, can we forget the ice cream, geez. Especially oyster ice cream, somehow that just doesn't appeal to me. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think they were experimenting. No, I thought I saw that at Baston Robbins the other day. <laughs> yeah, all those flavors. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, there's a, a whole lot of, um, in some ways I'm surprised. I, I'm wondering if some of, some of this information has been brought back to the fore because of, of the popularity of Hamilton, but a lot of people, um, have interesting takes on some of what, from our perspective, might seem like gossip. For example, the speculation that um, their marriage may have been more platonic um, than otherwise. Um, and as with, the, I, it's always interesting that all these issues around human behavior um, 
do resonate with people. And it's, I don't think it's so much that anybody's speculating just based on one thing, but when you're doing biographies of people that are long gone and times that are long past, um, all you can really do is report on what was um, discussed and talked about at the time. And if you remember that they were not a particularly traditional couple in so many ways. And um, yeah, he had a lot of opponents and opponents have a tendency just as they do today, um, wanting to discuss things that aren't necessarily part of, of the business at hand, right? Um, so yes, I don't think any of us really knows for sure if, how much of any of this is true. But it is interesting how much discussion is happening here in the chat and the Q&A. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, if you think about it, not in terms of, say, recent presidents, but historical ones, don't they all have controversial marriages, <laughs> whether it's John F. Kennedy and Jacqueline Kennedy or Eleanor and Franklin Roosevelt or Lincoln? Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying. That, you know, I mean, it, doesn't, it doesn't really sell books if you say that, oh, they, they loved each other and lived happily ever after, I think. Right. And, and among know, those for whom some of the, these no. things are striking a nerve, like how patriarchal the society was and how unjust, you know, the slave experience was and whether or not it was fair to have these rumors and what was it caused by it. it it's it, it's it's difficult, but you really need to try to be objective and just consider all of the range of possibilities and then come away with with your own conclusions, but not necessarily understand that none of them can be firm. I mean, we can only speculate on how any of these things worked out. Um, oh, yeah, no, very true. And I mean, you think about, I have to think also, too, about women's lives back then. I mean, so Dolly Madison, she's a widow. She has a young son. What career options are open? A lot of women did not work um, outside the home at this point in time. You would live with your parents until you got married. And then if something happened to your husband, um, you'd really be in dire straits because there was not a lot of professions that were open to women. Um, particularly Absolutely. ones that had already been married and had a child. Um, yeah, so this really is really a you, challenge for her yeah, and a lot of other women. Wage culture wars retroactively. I, mean, I think we've fallen into a kind of thing where everything, we're tempted all the time to, to take a position on everything. And you can't do that retroactively. It, it's not even a smart idea to do it currently, but to try to do it retroactively and debate what is true and what isn't true is, is like a endless quest and it, it's almost like more of a waste of energy than it is like a practical application of understanding possibilities and and um challenges oh yeah sure no definitely so um let's see well why don't we do this let's uh, so i want to talk about the film so if you're watching this live just sit tight we'll actually start streaming the film in just a moment um let me do this let me actually talk about the film because if you're watching the recording of this you can always um, find the film on your own. So bear with me for one moment. All right, so let's talk about this Dolly Madison film. So again, there's not a lot of films that they've made uh, that feature First Ladies. So this one's called Dolly Madison, American's First Lady. It's part of the PBS American series. And I love the acting job by Eve Vest. She plays Dolly Madison in the film. Uh, so you can be on the lookout for that. And they have um, a fair amount of stuff about her interaction with James Madison and her uh, what life was like for her uh, before, during, and after the White House years. So I thought that was really fascinating. And there's a lot of great quotes in the film. Uh, this is maybe one of my favorites. She said, we all have a great hand in the forming of our own destiny. Uh, and what's meant by that is, you know, people, everyone faces challenges hurdles and obstacles, and it's how you overcome those and move on that really shapes your own destiny. So something to keep in mind with that. So this film came out in 2010. It's 85 minutes long. It was produced by PBS American Experience. Uh, the director, Muffy Meyer. So she uh, put this together. So I'll give a shout out to her. Uh, Eve Best plays Dolly Madison. In my opinion, I really highly recommend this film. So if you to stick around and watch it with us live in a few minutes you can do so if you're not able to um, see it with us make sure you check it out it's available in different um, internet sites but when you're watching it you'll have to let us know what do you think about it so um let's do this let's take a short five minute intermission um because the film is another 85 minutes and i'll queue up the film if you're watching us live if you're watching a recording of this program that will be the end of our show for today thanks so much for joining us and the recording of this program of course will be 
on our YouTube channel. So bear with me for one moment.